All right. It is so good to be back for class after a little Thanksgiving break. Uh, got some students that, that will probably be joining as they see the link. Anyways, um, happy Thanksgiving to those of you guys who live in the U.S. And uh, it's funny talking to a couple of the clients this morning, uh, this morning and this last week of like having no real understanding of like what Thanksgiving is. And I think that I think that when you kind of like wake up, um, you you make it you make all these holidays like your own meaning, because, you know, when we start to expose certain truths, we realize that, you know, we've been living a lie. But if we're going to live a lie, we might as well make it up. So good morning. Hey, Christine. Hey, Dominique. Uh, good, good morning to everybody. I'm at work, but well, that's OK. Cool. Good to uh, good to see your name there. OK, so we have. I've got weeks, weeks, weeks of built up. So I'm excited to, to jump in. You know, we're, gosh, we're in, we're like, like in December. I can't believe it. It's like this year has been ridiculous. And I mean, I, a part of it is like, it's going so fast. And part of it is like, thank God it's almost over. You know, it's like, ah, what a year. Uh, but really what I want to discuss today is because I've been breaking down like the work of next year as I'm painting walls and like chop wood, carry water part of my evolution of the apothecary and quantum fitness, which is, it's moving, it's moving along. We have a paint on the walls and we have locks on the front doors, which, it, you know, we are, we're getting there. So the rest of it, I'm kind of doing with a small crew um, of, you know, elbow grease, but that's, but that's cool because we really get to make it uh, our own now. And, um, the vibe that I'm putting into these apothecaries is something that I'm really glad that I was, uh, I wouldn't say patient, but, but took a lot of time to practice and decide like what the anchor frequency was going to be. Because ultimately alchemy means all of me, right? And the alchemist is one who uses everything, right? Everything, good, bad, ugly, right? As a, a way to create that that gold or that that dream life and that's really where we are right now as a collective is we are are here to use every element of our lives to grow and for a long time you know for a really long time we we played like so many loops i just made a couple of reels and tiktok videos about depression and i think that most humans are depressed that live in a collective society. And I don't think that they realize it, but the core definition of depression is disappointment. So if you just took a moment and took stock, just disappointments, you know, and again, some of them are easy to brush off and some of them keep you literally in a heartbreak. Some of you, you know, some of these depressions, these disappointments have literally stopped your dreams in their tracks. Some of these disappointments have altered the course of what you believe about yourself. Some of these disappointments have uh, created such a separation of your own truth within you that you may not know that you're showing up in physical reality. These loops of disappointment and depression are actually separating you more from your own inner child. Right. So if you find you're, that you're not playing much or that you're using all of your creative energy to survive. Right. If you are forgetting that creativity isn't about perfection, it's just about the act of. Right. If you are forgetting that everybody is as literally living their best way that they know how from their level of consciousness. Right. You're stuck in a disappointment. So a disappointment loop is so toxic to the human soul that it will change the course and direction of your entire existence. And you won't even know it. You know, the relationships that you're in or not in could be based on disappointment. And ultimately, when we look at disappointment, we could look at the stages of grief because ultimately, if you're living chronic loops of disappointment, you're settling, right? And settling is plain small. OK, so I thought I would share this really cool story that it was too long to post. So I'm going to break it down. And it was basically this world renowned violinist. Right. One day 
um, after a very big concert that he held where he sold out and his tickets went for more than $150 a piece. Um, and I could even post the name of this guy who did this experiment. Um, he, I mean, his, some of his violin sympathies are considered to be the most technically delivered uh, music that a violinist can, can prepare and play. And what he did was a day after his sold out concert, he decided to experiment what true talent is into a basic collective society and what genius and what um, you know extraordinary being looks like when they are thrown into a very mediocre existence. And so he took his violin and he went into the New York subway and he played for hours. And after a few hours, he walked away with $30. No real conversations with anybody because everybody was just hustling by. Nobody stopped in awe, you know. And yet the day before, he was literally selling out huge stadiums for over $150 a piece to play by himself. And now here, mixed in collective survival, he is nothing more than ordinary, actually less than, because what do you think of when you see people playing for money on the street? What do you think of, of people who are, you know, begging, which he wasn't at all, right? I don't even know if he had a sign with, you know, please give me money. I think literally he was just um, showing up to, to do this experiment. Not one person recognized him. And I believe that he was even performing in the same um, the same city where he was sold out the day before. So what does that mean for your genius, right? You know, one of the things that I've really learned now diving deep into quantum fitness is that your environment and your influence will make or break whether you live a mediocre or an, ex or an extraordinary reality. If you hang around with really ordinary, heavy, disappointment, depressed, anxious, worried, stressed, critical, judgmental people, that will rub off on you. But more importantly, you will not be able to be seen and heard, will you? Because the vibration of survival keeps people consumed, consumed. So. If I'm playing in the subway, a beautiful piece of music, and you're in survival, you're not going to be paying attention to my art, to my creativity, to my genius. You're going to be paying attention to your survival. The fact that you're late, the fact that you're, you know, I'm in the way, maybe the fact that you're seeing me begging for money, even if I don't have a sign. You're seeing what the filters of survival allow you to see. And so when you are running survival programs, money, time, being seen and heard, feeling loved in your relationships, body illness, you are not paying attention to the beauty, the art, the creativity, and the magic that is available to you, within you, possibly right in front of you, right? So as I'm building these apothecaries, I, I'm, I'm putting that idea into the core vibration and vortex of each one of these places. Because ultimately, there is always magic right under your nose. There's always a solution right outside the problem. There is always abundance across from lack. There is always freedom in your feeling of stuck. Because let's literally break this down. You're asking the universe. Every spiritual person that I've ever met believes that they have to ask the universe or, or tell the universe or desire from the universe that which they would like to create and live as, okay? But let's look at the word universe, break it down. You in verse. Are you asking yourself for money? Are you asking yourself for more time? Are you asking yourself for that solution in your body? or to bring your desire back because you're so disappointed and depressed that you've lost all the point of, you know, it's not fair and, and what's the point? Or, or are you literally still asking an outside omnis presence 
of, of what it is that you could create here because you ultimately have a fundamental belief system in your conscious awareness that you create your reality. But fundamentally, and in your structure of your first seven years, that did not appear the case because your first introduction to the, rea the reality of the universe was your parents, your guardians, your environment, your school, your church, your friends. Ultimately, it felt very, very real that everyone had power over you, or at least that it was their choice whether you thrived. It was their choice whether it was a yes or a no to your dreams or your opportunities. I mean, how many of you wanted to go to college but couldn't go where you wanted? How many of you didn't want to go to college and were forced? How many of you hated school? How many of you just survived school? How many of you turned it into a game and thrived through school? Because ultimately your first seven years is gonna be where your true belief systems were anchored in as solid. And you would wanna look at neural pathway anchors at the same as, as if you've ever gone skiing on a hill, right? And you look down and you can see where people have gone over and over again. Ultimately, that's gonna be your first recognition of that's the safe way to go. That's the way that people have been going. And doesn't look like anyone's dead on the on, on the you know mountain there. So that's the way. And the more you have, you know, believed something, and look at that word, we've broke it down every which way we can for years. It's it's be live, okay, or become the lie. That's what belief means. And the beliefs that were anchored, practiced, prepared, and pushed into your brain in those first seven years are going to dictate still to this day, a pattern that your reality, your universe, your God, your creator, although you may believe consciously that you are creating your reality, do not really act as if. Are you acting as if you are the universe? Are you asking yourself, your own biochemistry, your electromagnetic blood for money? Or are you going, please universe, give me the money. And you're assuming that there is an outside support system that somehow will look at you and decide whether you've been good or bad, deserving. Are you pretty enough? Are you healthy enough? Are you, you know, ha have you made the right choices in order to get that which you ask for? Because the third dimensional reality, there are so many spiritual people that are still so embedded into the third dimensional reality and do not have a clue. These are the ones who are teaching that, you know, how to be in 5D, okay? But ultimately, 3D is a, is a holographic virtual reality simulation that you incarnate as a spiritual soul into a human body to master the game. You will not be creating your ultimate reality in the third dimension because it's not wired for that. The master and slave game is the third dimensional reality. All right. Now here's, here's the kick because you are the universe. And so you are playing both simulation and set. You are playing both character and director and editor and producer and co-star and circumstance, because you are playing all of these elements, it is very easy to forget that you are all that it is, that there is only you, that there is only you. So when you think, yeah, the master and slave game, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Yeah, I, you know, if I speak my truth, I get judged. If I don't speak my truth, I get my, I hurt myself. You know, if I spend money, you know, I, I have to lose something. If I work hard, I have to lose my time. There is always a warden and there is always a master in your game. If you're in the third dimension. Now there is also a slave. Okay. So let's really look at those two identification players of the third dimension, master and slave. When you think of the idea of a master, someone that is someone who is in charge of saying yes or no to you. That is someone who is responsible and has power and control over your freedom, over your abundance, over your, um, 
you know, your choice. Okay. And so if there is anyone acting as if that right now in your physical reality, then you have separated from yourself because ultimately you are both your master and your slave. Here's how. What are you a slave to? There are things in your physical reality that you are a slave to. Number one, easy, addictions. Number two, right? Uh, circumstantial obligation and commitment, all right? Number three, your own belief systems, okay? You know, you got told enough as a kid. I don't care how bad you say yes to yourself now. That no is still the fundamental first choice in your development of what you've created the universe as, which means that if you had strict parents, you still have them somewhere, okay? If you had critical parents, you still have them. If you had narcissistic parents, you still got them. But it's in your own head. And here's how I know. Because I have challenged thousands of people over the years to quit that job. And again, not asked, not, not given them advice, but just put them into that place where they can find alignment for their own desires. They've quit the job. They've left the toxic relationship. They've started the company. They've liquefied their 401ks. They've spent thousands of dollars on spiritual development. They've altered their bodies. They've dieted. They've chosen special nutrition. And not once did they ever really notice that once those things were different, that nothing changed. And the reason why nothing changed is because once your boss is no longer your master, you realize your own ego is. You realize that your own procrastination, lack of motivation, your own idle fear of what should I do of your fear of uncertainty. See, it's really easy to blame your boss or your spouse or your circumstance for why you can't do what you want to do. But when you remove all those obstacles and you still don't do what you want to do, that's when it gets really scary. Because... There isn't anyone telling you no, except you. You realize that you're not saying the words no. You might be saying not yet. You might say, well, it's not good timing, or I don't have the money yet. Why don't you have the money? You know, why don't you have, why don't you have the relationships? Okay. And so this is some major tough love today, but it's definitely something, everything I'm saying to you, I have literally been in meetings with myself over all year, okay? So this isn't like, hmm, this is like mirror work, okay? Ultimate mirror work right now. This is about realizing that when you remove obstacles from your physical reality and circumstances do not change, that your, yet your own mind is your, is your burden. So if you're using your mind to think, if you're using your mind to ask the universe, who are you asking? You're going to be disappointed and disappointment's going to turn depression and depression causes disease, guys, because when you are in a state of chronic stress, anxiety of how am I going to live my next week and simultaneously depressed, then you are you're burning the candle at both ends and the physical body cannot cannot handle that for too long. All right. When you are depressed, you are going to feel like you're waiting. You are going to feel idle. There is going to be a sense of you're being ghosted, being ignored, being rejected, being abandoned, being denied, being, you know, passed over, right? And, and that's going to make you feel an old trigger of unworth. It's going to bring up those perpetual old feelings of I must not be good enough because they would have hurt me. So what do you think that violinist thought playing down in a New York subway? Did you think that he thought he wasn't good enough because no one saw him? Or did he realize that the environment that he was in was an environment where people weren't, you know, preparing to go see a professional violinist and get in their Sunday best and actually pay money to sit and be with a symphony? No, they were rushing by busy, stuck in their own heads, stuck in their own problems and may not even have heard his beautiful music. Do you think that he stopped and said, I need to retire. I need to stop doing this. Or did he 
did he look at how many of us are that violinist in the wrong place, you know, asking the wrong people to see us and hear us, you know, asking for, for attention when people are so stressed out, you know, half of the reason why your parents and, and my parents could not see me or love me or take care of me the way that I needed to was no different than the violinist. I could have been playing magic in, right in front of them. And all they were trying to do was survive the moment, okay? Survive their own trauma, to survive their own bills, survive their own pain, survive their own relationships, survive their own bodies. Because the third dimensional reality game is survive, okay? That's what it is is the third dimensional reality is a comfortable apocalypse, all right? And it's a gluttonous apocalypse. It's not like there's a scarcity of food. It just might be so much of it that you get overwhelmed and it may cost so much of it, you can't afford all of it. So it may feel like a sense of scarcity. It may feel like a sense of, of what you are allowed to. But when you look at your talent, OK, and you look at the things that you're naturally good at and the things that you are naturally attuned to with ease and flow and you surround yourself with very survivalists, let's call them that people that are stuck in pain. And, and you judge yourself off of whether they see or hear you, it might cause you to take score whether you are good enough. But ultimately, you know, most of the clients that have come to me over the years, they've tried everything before they come to me. They've changed their diets, you know, they've changed their jobs, they've changed their spouses, they've changed everything except their minds. Like, and then they, they think, okay, so what do I have to do, right? Because I've changed this and this and this and this. I mean, how many changes have you made in the last year and certain things are still not changing? So if things are not changing, we're choosing it somewhere. But we have to look below the conscious awareness. We have to look below the idea of the subconscious. Because everything that's been happening for you right now is a resurrection of your unconscious. Your bloodline, your ancestry, your past karmic dharma, okay? The stuff that is hidden in your lower vibrational alignments right now that are anchoring you to the past are messengers, not obstacles. They're messengers. They're telling me, okay, I'm still vibrating below my true abundance. I'm still vibrating below being a sovereign free being. I must be vibrating in lack somewhere. I must be taking score and judging myself off of my environment, who and what I am, right? So we can break this down. And I've put together about 10 different ways that you can really change your how here. Because we know that the how and the when is the universe's job, okay? But if I'm the universe, then I am my how and I am my when. So when we wait, it is a belief that there is something outside of me that is going to dictate my choice, my freedom, my abundance, and my worth, all right? So when we ask ourselves, hey, I am both my what and my why and my how and my when, but I am both masculine and feminine. And therefore, when I am working in a co-creative body, right, and a body that is playing a symphony and it is not playing disaster, then that flow within me will return. So there's so many things that we could be asking ourselves right now to first and foremost, become aware of what we are unaware of. Secondly, to fully accept where we are vibrating, whether we like it or not. And then to take a step back as the observer and take stock. You know, one of the greatest things that you could do is sit down this, this, you know, this month and instead of creating resolutions of what you're going to do different next next year, what you're what you're going to think differently, how you're going to show up, you know what 
what your state of being is going to be. And the only way that you're going to truly be able to change your vibration is to become aware of the vibrations that are playing in your blind spots. And the number one vibration playing in our blind spot right now is that we are not the universe. We are, okay? You are the universe, okay? It's your story. And yours is going to look different than every single person else's, just like Earth is different than Mars. Both have strength, both have weaknesses. But if I constantly looked to Venus for my worth, right? Then I would see elements within her that I could never be, right? So if you're spending more time consuming social media than you are creating content, you are in the third dimension. If you are studying others more than you are studying yourself, then you are in the third dimension. If you are waiting, procrastinating, judging, if you are afraid of anything at this point, then you're in the third dimension. And that's okay. You need to accept it. We have to accept. Okay, I'm still playing here. I'm still in the master and slave game. All right? Because... Never has there ever been a time in history where we had the potential to be so sovereign. That sounds counterintuitive based on what you may be seeing right now. But ultimately, as the earth expands her consciousness and the photonic energy increases and your blood that is a micro of her macro is going with the flow of evolution, there is opportunity, infinite potential, but it does not lie in the mind. It does not lie what you see with your traumatized eyes, your traumatized ears, and your traumatized hearts. It is not, cannot be seen, just like that violinist. Each of us is our own genius. We come here with the exact toolkit and every spiritual gift that the next guru has. You are not without your toolbox. You are not without your gifts. You are a fully, fully operational being of infinite possibilities, sovereign within their own universe that has separated from yourself, from a lack of choice, from a lack of love, You've been forced into rejecting and abandoning yourself for the good of mankind. You've been forced into separating yourself for love. Love is one of your biggest jail cells, all right? And until you realize that it's it's such a catch-22 here, hence the year, because you really are damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in the third dimension. There is no right way to be good or bad. I mean, one of the greatest, I mean, if you really want to get dark here, go watch Shawshank Redemption, right? It's a story of a man who was wrongly accused and he spent, what, 25, 30 years in jail doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing. And both things led him to be more and more trapped until he realized that the game was broken, that there was no you know, sucking up to the warden. There was never, because the thing is, is the more you suck up and the more you are good to your favorite people, the more they want to hold you hostage. And the more bad you are to people, then the more they reject you and abandon you and make you feel worthless. So if you are not sovereign in your own universe, you are going to be damned if you do and damned if you don't. So what you want to do is you want to You want to learn the rules like an artist, okay? And and learn them all and then break them. Break them, bend, manipulate them. Because when you are asking anything outside of you for anything, you will be disappointed. And then disappointed is measured by the amount of guilt and shame that you feel as a result of what you can or cannot create or do in this physical reality. So when we are looking at the idea of non-duality, that is, that is a kind of a, a life vest because you're like, okay, well, I am damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Let me fully accept this. I could be the best mother in the world and I would have to abandon myself. 
I could be the worst mother in the world and my kids feel abandoned. Who's right and who's wrong? So until you are ready to disappoint others, right? And let others down so that you can return to yourselves, you have to return to yourself fully, ultimately. You have to reset your factory settings of your brain. You have to eliminate your neural pathways of the, the, the hill that you have skied down a thousand times that feels comfortable and familiar, which may feel intuitive and it's absolutely untrue, right? The things that feel the most comfortable to you are probably in alignment with the third dimensional reality you. The things that are terrifying for you is the new you beckoning you forward. The things that are the most uncomfortable as far as breaking your own habits, right? Creating a daily routine that is designed to grow you. Stop playing small. Get out of the New York subway, right? Instead, prepare to be on a stage where people can see you and pay for you. And that's a metaphor because really, when you are playing small, you could be playing at a major league level of skill and you will be ignored. And if you take that as an indicator of your worth or what you are capable of, right? If he would have left that day with $30 after hours of playing genius level music, could he pay his bills? Could he pay his bills with $30? Could, or would he have to go get a real job and stop being a violinist? So those of you who want to be an artist, those of you who want to invent something or create something, you have to say, am I playing in the subway? Because maybe that's the only problem. Maybe what I need to do is practice, prepare, and play and get on the stage. Now the stage is going to terrify you because everybody might see you and then everybody might have an opinion of you, all right? The most beautiful people in the world still get cheated on, all right? The most, uh, you know, wealthiest people in the world still can get cancer. So the third dimensional reality is not set up for you to win. It was designed for you to exit, okay? Really take a breath here. Stop trying to beat the game because the game is like a, a learning computer and it's designed to know your greatest weaknesses and play against you. It's designed to breadcrumb you. Now, if you don't know what this term means, you might want to study it because I guarantee someone or something is breadcrumbing you right now. Breadcrumbing is the, is the idea or metaphor of, of something or someone giving you just enough to keep you moving towards it, all right? So you get paid just enough at your paycheck or your job to stay, all right? You get a couple of weeks of good behavior from your partner, and so you stay. You get just enough from your friends to keep them. Okay, you get you keep your body just enough healthy enough so that it will do what you need it to do. You have just enough money in your bank account to live an idea or an aspect of a bigger dream. But you don't have more than enough yet. Now, some of you might in some areas. And if you are abundance in certain areas, notice if you are being your own master and slave in that abundance because you could be pissing it away. You could be someone who has time right now. What are you using it for? Okay, what, if you have money right now, what are you spending it on? People who literally still have 401ks sitting in their bank account, it's shocking to me. <gasps> you know, it's like people who are counting on the third dimensional reality to protect them or to retire them when the world has utterly completely changed in the last three years. You're living such a different simulation in the last three years than you were before. Such a different reality. You know, when you are counting on your future to take care of you now, you are playing the master and slave game. If you are being pulled back to the past, you need to take a look at where you have worth trauma. If you are 
always projected into the future of worry, then you're running safety programs, okay? So, okay, I'm getting pulled in the future again. Where do I not feel safe? Okay, I'm in the past again right now. What have I, what, what has been anchored there? What is holding me back there? Who is holding me back there? Because it is so much easier to blame our collective society on our ability to thrive. But until you walk the bridge or the shadow of death, which is the fourth dimension, and you start to pay attention to the fact that you are in hell and that you are in a comfortable jail cell that's not very comfortable. And if you are, are playing a certain level of that jail cell, all right? So you could be on the fourth floor and live a completely different reality of a jail cell that someone is on the first floor, right? So you may think, oh, I'm not in 3D. I'm thriving. No, you're just on the fourth floor and they're on the first. You're still in jail until you are completely altering your simulation day by day, minute by minute, with no regard of the past and no concern of the future. You are presently living in an artistic flow of, of that idea of masculine and feminine creativity. What is bringing you to life right now? Is it hope of something in the future or is it something that's happening right now? What are you so excited about your life right now? Like if I was going to say not in the future, what are you excited about in the future? No. And what are you, what were, you know, what did you love about the past? Let it go. What is the most exciting thing you're doing on a daily basis right now? Because this is going to tell you what timeline or what, what, you know, game you're playing. If you are like, I can't wait to get off this freaking cold just so I can go finish painting my picture or, you know, like I'm getting a download right now of something I'm going to do once we get off this phone or, you know, like if there isn't something that is exciting you past a child seeing bubbles right now in your physical reality with all hell breaking loose on the planet, then you really have not truly, truly connected with your magic. Okay. Okay. There's some of us who are born thinking in our minds, and there's some of us that are born thinking in our hearts. Now, the ones of us who are born thinking from our heart, it's been a very difficult place. It's been so painful here. We're sensitive, we're empathic, we feel everything. But don't you realize that if you pulled out of the fact that you feel everything so deeply and looked at the fact that you could, don't you see that that could be actually potential? That that could be your way to manipulate and bend reality. Children call it pretending. Imagination. Imagination. I imagine my nation. An army of magicians. That's what we are. I've said this a thousand times in the last 10 years. And sometimes I forget it. Because it feels so real here. And the more that you get stuck in your own patterns and your own loops and the more rejection and abandonment you stack on your plate and the more disappointment that falls at your feet after a burst of pain reward based hope, right? You guys know that if you do not change your circumstances based on your own belief systems that your hopeful excitement ideas are going to turn into expectations expectations will turn into disappointment and disappointment will turn into depression and depression is basically uh it it's like someone who's dealing with anxiety and depression at the same time is literally revving their engine in the garage you're going to die from it the carbon dioxide is going to kill you because your motor can't handle it your body is electromagnetic energy. Your thoughts are electric, okay? Your thoughts have way too much power. When your body, your body is literally the key here. Everything I've said in the last two years is start to be friends with this body. Your first questions are to self. Your awareness is your thoughts, your beliefs, your reality, your circumstances, your choices. Find where you are playing master and slave. Find where you are giving your power away. 
where you are being that violent, it is in your subway. And that could be you and your family. Your subway could be the family you're in, right? They're the ones who make you feel small. They go, mom's talking crap again, here we go. Or, you know, your sister is draining you or, you know, name it. I mean, you guys, your family is the old version of third dimensional love. Now the family you choose, remember how I said the fifth dimension is choice. So when you start making choices on the reg, regardless of what's happening, okay? Regardless of your circumstances, if you choose joy, even though your bills are not paid, that may appear to you irresponsible. Okay, if you choose to go paint a picture because you just can't go to work that day, that may appear irresponsible, but that's actually how you escape the game, right? And it's not about escaping and getting caught. It's about literally walking right out. It's about going, okay, I'm going to use some of the elements of the third dimensional reality to build my own world right? The kids call it Minecraft. They may have certain tools. They may have certain elements that they have to work with, but the way they lay it out is actually what they get to experience. This isn't different. You may have the same stuff to deal with. There might be a subway. There might be a family. There might be a stage, right? But maybe if you're on the first floor, you don't see a stage. Maybe there's no clue of, of any opportunity that would ever come into your being. And I guarantee you, the only thing that is stopping a stage from presenting itself to you right now is the company that you keep, the influence that you say yes to and that you surround yourself with, and the number of people that you are helping on a constant basis that are not helping you. That's it. Your environment is your subconscious and unconscious vibration. The government is your unconscious, okay? The collective society is the unconscious. The subconscious is the reality of your family dynamic, your home, your car, your little bubble is your subconscious, okay? But once you kind of get really comfortable in your own bubble, you start to just want to branch out of that bubble and you realize that you're going to smack up against society and the collective and the government and the rules. So all you're doing is your getting to know your unconscious, all right? It's not about the left ring. It's not about the right ring. It's not about the Illuminati. It's not about the powers that be. It's, it's not about the story of Earth. Earth is a li living library where all potential is not only allowed, it's regulated. Earth is a holographic universe where all 12 dimensions are accessible, usable, livable, um, seeable, here now, in this now moment. 2022 represents the catalyst point for us to build from choice a new structure, right? So let's look at the structure that you're standing on. Who's governing it? You know, who is paying for it? How are you creating it or, or codependently creating it? And what level of separation are you living? That's it. It's the game of separation. It's the game of hot and cold. When you feel powerless, you are far away from yourself. You want to really look at this holographic space as, you know, I'm sitting here where I'm at, and then I can see myself in this computer talking, right? All of a sudden, if my words did not match what I was thinking, that would be a 911. What's going on over there? She's doing something different than I'm thinking. That's all separation is, you guys, because there is a version of you outside the veil that is trying to get your attention, okay, through the idea of hope and excitement and joy and happiness and music and nature and, you know, that, that glimpse. But ultimately, if you start going towards it without looking at the noose around your neck called belief system, you're going to get pulled into disappointment at the last hour, at the last minute, and it's going to be in the form of an echo. All right? Years and years and years and years I've taught this echo. There's only four, guys. There's only four. 
And so we think that we would be kind of pros at the rules by now. Because if you want to live a non-dualistic reality where you use every element, dark light, as a form of creativity, then you're going to have to get really comfortable with both sides of you, all right? With the sun and the moon, the shadow and, and, and the sun, the part of you that you believe you are, and then the part of you that gets triggered. The part of you that's getting triggered is the part of you that's in the blind spot and it's it's in your blind it's in your blind spot and it's in your unawareness. Okay. It's an old wound that just got bumped. This is why you love being alone because no one bumps your alleys. Okay. But you're here to be in a relationship-based universe where your reality is a mirror of your consciousness. So what part of you, part, part of your mirror scares you? And I don't think that, that men and women have really identified yet truly what is in the way for them. Because as a feminine energy, I can have a safety program and I can get caught up in a lot of fearful thoughts around my own beauty, okay, around my own health. You know, a woman who doesn't feel attractive will settle more, okay? A woman who doesn't feel healthy in her body will actually feel she is unworthy. A masculine energy who is not able to create and develop and build, right, will be quite destructive. So the game, although simple, right, it's like, okay, I get it, but do we? Do we, are we living as if, are we in such a disillusion? Look at that word, delusion. How many times have you been called delusional? And you take it as a bad thing. I think that's one of the most amazing compliments I've ever received. Jess, you're delusional. And I would like to stay that way. Because at least in my universe, when I am creating from both my feminine idea of the architect, and the builder and using the same building materials that you guys have okay we all have the same building materials but if there is a shitty contractor there right who is sabotaging this build because your job here is to figure out the game accept the game see where you are programmed into the game clear yourself back to factory settings, okay? Get a sovereign body so that it is vibrating through personal choice, not what choices you are allowed to have. When you are vibrating from your choice, it's going to feel wrong from the outside looking in, all right? It's going to feel like you have gone mad. So if you are surrounded by people who would think that of you, there is probably um, a 50-50 chance that you'll ever do anything with that disillusion, except feel abandoned and rejected constantly, right? When you lose something from gaining more awareness, you are not losing anything except baggage, right? I talked to a client yesterday and she's doing all this self-awareness work and she's watching her friend circle get smaller and smaller. And of course, her ego identity, identity, which is the sleeping part of her, is like, I'm losing friends. But the part of her that is not settling for that type of friendship anymore, that is not letting people use her and not rescuing everyone, has grown out of that, right? When you move into a bigger, nicer home, do you feel like you've lost the old one? Maybe part of your memories, but you don't usually look at it as a negative. But we do when it comes to friends and family and loved ones and jobs. Your ego will get triggered if you get fired, even if you prayed for it every day. Because there's a part of you that sees getting fired as rejection. So if you do not know your fundamental true wounding of rejection and abandonment yet, then it's going to keep getting poked. You've got to be like, okay, my wounding is rejection and abandonment. 
and I feel abandoned when. But ultimately, every single time that we feel abandoned and rejection, it is because we have chosen people that we had to reject and abandon ourselves for. I'm going to say that again. Anytime we are experiencing rejection and abandonment outside of us, it is because we have chosen something that caused us to abandon or reject ourselves first. So the fundamental root was I abandoned me for you and then you abandoned me? <gasps> How dare you? But if I abandon me, then I abandon the universe, you guys. I abandon my bank. I abandon my magic. I abandon my intuitive guidance system. I abandon my own desires. I abandon all of my special things that make me. And this is what happens when you get into a relationship that you're compromising too much of your own sovereignhood to be in that relationship. If you are in the relationship where it has created such a codependency, where you cannot pay your bills or go where you want or do what you want or watch what you want or say what you want or eat what you want at this age, that should just be your indicator right now of your level of separation. That's it. There's no judgment. It's like, oh, well, damn, I have really separated myself. I've forgotten that I have my own bank. The universal bank of abundance and freedom of my own soul's essence that is nothing but flow, nothing but abundance, nothing but freedom. Okay, so I want to give you guys a how because this has been like a right. So your how here is a coming home to yourself. That's it. And the way that you come home to yourself, first and foremost is you notice where you are actually free. Notice where you are abundant. Notice how I'm not saying use gratitude here. Gratitude is a quantum leap. I'm talking about just notice. Be aware. If you feel scarcity lack right now or, or that you are waiting, ask yourself, what am I waiting for? Okay. Okay. I'm waiting for this truck to come in. I'm waiting for um, this person to say yes. I'm waiting for, you know, my opportunity to come in, all right? Whatever you're waiting for right now, take a look at it, stop, and then ask yourself, is it around freedom? Is it around abundance? Okay, because if you're waiting, guaranteed you're in survival. You're in survival. Waiting is one of the most draining things you could do to your body. When you ask a child to wait, one of their root wounds is time. They hate waiting. They hate it. And the reason why is because the soul doesn't wait ever. It knows that, okay, if this door is closed, what's that door? What's that door? What's that window? And we call that manipulation when someone does that. Or when we see children go into a different direction because that door is open, we look at them as bad kids. When ultimately their natural guidance system is telling them, look, that door is closed, go there. Mom said no to the cookies. Go ask dad. There's like no, there's no negative like icky there. It's just a way to thrive. I've, I've taught you guys for years. Okay, I can't do this. What can I do? Because when you talk to yourself, you are talking to the bank. You are talking to the universe. You are talking to God. You are talking to choice. You're talking to freedom. You are talking to abundance. You're talking to the greatest love affair and your soul's mate, all right? But when someone has the power for you to separate yourself and be obsessed, whether it's negative or positively obsessed on something else, then your higher self will try to use that obsession to get you back to yourself through a lesson or through some sort of pain, all right? So your how here is to come home to yourself and literally have the conversations that you're having with other people. Having the conversations like, okay, I feel scared right now. Great, what is scaring me? Well, I don't have this. Okay, good, what do I have? Well, I have this. Okay, and that's taking me to another fear. Great, okay, what else do I have? 
you know, most of you guys, especially that are in my class, have more freedom and abundance in some form, whether it's talent or knowledge or money or, you know, freedom, you know, than, than a lot of the world. And sometimes it's, if you can't, if you've been studying other people's vibration a lot more than you've been studying your own, you're going to feel small. But if you studied people who were doing less well than you, you might be able to see yourself as more abundant. Maybe you're on the fourth floor, but Jane on the first. Who's on the first floor? Right? If you if you looked at your home that you live in right now versus someone in a third world country, would they think that you were abundant? Would they think that you had choice? Do you have choice that you're pissing away? You know, your brain is a problem solver. We know that. Okay. It was designed to be led by the soul as a way to stay focused and disciplined and routined in order to build a thorough reality. But when you are not allowed to build your own reality, the brain becomes a problem solver of keeping you alive. So a hundred things might be going well. You might have a hundred different outfits. You might have tons of craft projects. You might have tons of information to put into that book. And I probably guarantee you, if you're stressed about something you don't have, you're not using what you do have. Because you think, well, what's the point? If you've said, what's the point? Or it's not fair in your mind in the last week, you are disappointed and depressed. Acknowledge it. Shit, I am depressed. Depressed is suppressed disappointment. And it will manifest as waiting. It will manifest as procrastinating. It will manifest as the all or nothing. It will manifest as the getting ghosted, getting rejected, getting denied. But I want you guys to take a breath for a minute and, and realize that you are that, you're that violinist. And that you have just not been in the right place where anybody with a shred of gratitude could appreciate your talent. You have been in the wrong place. You have not been the wrong person. You have been in an influence where people were not celebrating your talents. Your talents were overlooked. And the things that you weren't good at, because you didn't come here to be good at this game. You came here to be good at the next one. Okay? You didn't come here to be good at 3D. You probably envy people that do well in 3D. You're like, wow, look at them. They're just doing so good here. Trust me when I tell you that you do not want that. You may see a highlight reel, but you do not know that they have sold their soul to the devil to have their bills paid and to have that beautiful architecture that they live in. And that relationship that you don't know what's going on behind that plane doors because the third dimension, whether you are a billionaire or homeless, is the same game. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to be a billionaire of creativity, of infinite possibilities. When you see stuck, I want you to be like, okay, I'm stuck. You know, where do I think that I need to go here? And maybe I just need to come home. And I need to ask myself if I can qualify for a damn loan from my own universe that I never have to pay back. Because honestly, even the spiritual people are still asking some ominous presence for stuff when it's their own body that creates you out of this reality. You have 12 strands of DNA for 12 dimensions. All right, when you start using that DNA, you start having access to higher dimensional aspects of reality, which means that third dimensional reality is not master and slave, but it moves into a dualistic nature of choice, okay? Choice isn't about having a feathered nest. It's about what you do with where you are. It's about stop playing in the subway for people who don't appreciate you. It's about being your own soul's mate before you go search for a mate. It's about becoming sovereign before you try to go out there and achieve sovereignhood. Because if it's not happening inside of you, then it's not going to happen outside of you. 
And if it is happening inside of you, it will show up for you outside of you. And therefore you don't have to stress and worry or even call a psychic because it's right there. If shit is hitting the fan, then shit's hitting the fan on the inside, okay? And that when we wake up to the fact that we've been living a lie, it is pretty hard to digest. And that to me is like, when you become more aware, you have to notice you're depressed. You have to notice that you don't feel free even though you quit your job. You have to, it's like, it's like there's levels of, you know, disassociation that happen even when you make big changes because we think that if we make a big change, then that's going to change everything. But what becomes so disappointing is no amount of changes on the outside circumstances will actually let you thrive if you're believing inside of you that someone else, something else has control over you, right? This third dimensional game is about reconnection. There's no winning a master and slave game. It is a reconnection of their self, their own sovereignhood, their own genius, their own sophisticated tools and their own gifts, which means they are creating more content than they are consuming on social media. They are creating more art than they are studying art. Here's how you know you're entering 5D, when you are inspired by you, not someone else. When you are literally inspired by your last creative thought, when the creative thought you just had gives birth to an idea for you to go do something that has no you know, relevance in the third dimension, but you can't not do it. When you enjoy your own company and your own ideas more than anything out in the world, when you cannot wait to get back to your creative elements, when you can you know, look forward to creating art with food and clothes and family and drama and bills. When you can create art in every platform, your masculine and feminine are in love. So really the root here fundamentally is check your belief systems before you take action. And if you're not taking any action, there's probably a belief system that says, what's the point? Mm -hmm but you do not have any less gifts than anyone that they call a guru. The only difference between a guru, okay, and you is probably the power of influence that they were around told them that they were a guru. And someone's telling you that you're not even worth 30 bucks in the subway because you know as much as a guru, especially after you've been studying all this for the last forever. You know more than the gurus you listen to. I guarantee you it at this point. You probably have more talent in your fingertips than people that are getting paid billions of dollars. And the reason why? The only reason they're getting paid a billion dollars is because they believe they should. And they ask themselves through constant practice and awareness, self-focus. Remember, when you become the center of the universe, that's when the flow begins the center of the universe, which means I ask myself, okay, if I ask myself, but there's a thought that I secretly don't deserve it, I need to take that up with me. Maybe I need to do some amends work. Maybe I need to do some forgiveness work. Maybe I need to change certain things that I am doing to hurt myself. You know, what are, like, ask yourself this, what am I a slave to? And be honest. Be honest about this with yourself. What am I a slave to? What addiction am I a slave to? What resource am I a slave to? What person am I a slave to? Now, you may not think that a slave is, is like, oh, my kids, I'm not a slave to my kids. But if you care what they think, you are. If you care what anyone thinks, you are a slave to that. If you care, if you think someone has power or ownership over your finances, your well being, your body, your thoughts, then that there you're playing a slave. You're playing a slave in that story, okay? And this is why we're going to keep attracting our masters into our game because anywhere we're playing a slave, we've got to create a new master so we can become transparent to it.
And anywhere we are being a master over something, we will create a slave. A slave to what? Who is a slave to you? Who cannot live without you? All right? Who are you breadcrumbing? Who are you giving just enough? Who are you letting punish you? All right? So if you were self-consumed, self-focused, self-asking, self-knowing, like the relationship between the me, myself, and I was the center point of your universe, then you would start building a foundation. Now, at first, it would feel like even the wind can blow it over. But like, think about a bud that comes up from the dirt after all the fertilizer. It's going to be pretty weak. You've got to strengthen it. Okay. You've got to get sun and nutrition and love and joy around it. They say you will never become a millionaire if you do not know millionaires. Why? Because of the power of influence. You will never, ever become great if you do not practice your craft. Why? You see? And then you think, well, how come some people are? I guarantee you, if we looked at why they are successful, they were using choice when other people were using the master and slave. They chose to go practice. They chose to eat right. They chose to keep their own counsel. They chose to not be in difficult relationships. They chose to keep saying yes when the world told them no. They kept moving forward even though they failed. They kept they kept showing up, showing up, showing up. That is the only way someone is noticeably great in our world is if they've shown up so many times, but you don't see their failures. You don't see how many times it took them to override that belief system. You know, maybe they had great parents. Some people actually chose to have great parents and not go through such a great separation so they could be an example for us. But you know what your ego sees? Well, they had good parents. No, they chose to be that example, right? Now, I don't care how close you are to your mom and dad. You are your parents. You are your mom. You are your dad. You are your nurturing. And you are your conditioning. You are your bank. You are your God. You are your child. And when you are creating your reality, that's all you should be looking towards, right? Because if you need a hug from someone else, you're not sovereign. Now, I'm not saying you don't want one because that's nice too. But if you need something, remember, need master and slave brain. Want, well, there you go. You're starting to entering the fifth dimension called choice. Did you know the earth is already anchoring in the sixth dimension? You're like, I don't even get to be in the fifth yet. Well, there are enough beings on our plane that are experiencing the sixth dimension to start anchoring a physical expression of it. And what is the sixth dimension? Choice realized. That's the sixth dimension. Choice realized. All right. Choice means I don't have to dictate my reality to time and space. Choice means that money does not dictate my abundance or freedom has nothing to do with like where I can go or what I can do. When you start operating in choice, then you will start anchoring in a new world and the building blocks of your own potential will magnetize circumstances and events and people and places in order for you to live an actualized truth. This is going to come fundamentally from the relationship that you have with your body. You guys, pain is a messenger. Pain is not a punishment. It is a messenger. Where the pain is in your body is telling you what the hell is going on and what you actually believe that you may not know you believe. Hips, you are stuck in a master and slave program of direction. You know, hips is really about choice because it's your core. It's your bendability. It's your flexibility. If your hips are not flexible, if your back is not strong, if your abs are not tight, you do not believe you are creator. You believe that you are creator from a surface level. You identify with it. You, you academically understand it, but your body does not believe it. Look at your body as the child. 
all right? And look at your, your soul, your higher self as the parents. And look at your mind as the tools, okay? Like that's the building blocks. That's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to experience. So what you see is going to tell you whether or not you deserve it or not because someone doesn't think your music is great. So for today's like awareness, look at where you are enslaved and look at where you have to play the master because you really don't want to be playing the master either. Your ego gets very addicted to power very easily in a neutral, unity, harmonic, loving, non-judgmental space. There is no master and slave. It is about puzzle pieces working perfectly together, okay? It is about that the game of co-creation is more about unity and expression and expansion than it is control. There is no one telling you yes or no. I don't care what your credit says. I don't care what your health says, your blood labs say. Everything is changeable because this moment that we just moved in right now at 11, 13 a.m. Central Time is a brand new universe. And there is nothing in the past that is holding you hostage except your thought of it. There is nothing that you have done in the past that is going to dictate whether you could create this new world or not. There is nothing not in your toolbox. If you do not see your toolbox, it is because you're looking at someone else's. And you haven't practiced. You might be rusty. Your inner child will save the universe for you. And so the, the nonsense, the playful, the irresponsible, the fun, the joy, right? If you can get back to that in this now moment. Now, I'm not saying you have joyful stuff planned. I mean, in this now moment, if you can find joy, abundance, freedom, choice, in this, net, in this moment, then you are building your 5D foundation right now, regardless of what happened yesterday. You can build it right now. You sit in your space and go, what am I actually abundant in? Okay, yeah, I've got abundant problems, but I'm also abundant in things that I love. Go through them, name them. 10 things that I have of abundance, great. 10 tools that I personally have that help myself and others. 10 choices I can access right now. 10 ways that I could demonstrate freedom right now. Practice, 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 practice. Every time you practice, it's showing up. It's soul meeting body. It's body meeting intuition. It's intuition meeting physical reality. And that's going to anchor in a brick and anchor in a brick and anchor in a brick. And eventually from no work outside of you, and no begging the bank and no going to the doctor, your life becomes sovereign, right? So you will get to non-duality because your third dimensional reality is, is basically pressurizing you. So it's got to get worse to get better because it's got to get worse to get your attention. It's also good to get worse because fundamentally it's got to bring up all your belief systems and fears that you have about your own separation. So you're going to have to experience the shit in order to get the, the harvest. So if you accept that I've got to come into awareness of this, it's like a coming to Jesus with myself. I've been focusing on my lack of abundance when I'm very abundant. Okay. And if you are very abundant in stuff you don't want, create a flow with it and give it to someone else, donate it, sell it. That will open space. Because in sixth dimension, I access choice, I realize choice, you will also be able to bend time and space, gravity. You will be operating from six basically components of your own DNA. And you will be moving into this idea of this halfway mark between dimensions where you are still physical, yet extraordinarily in choice. It's so close, and that's why it feels scariest. If you're scared, if you're terrified, that's probably a good thing, all right? Your, your rituals, your routines, 
Your daily activities, your behaviors should come from abundance of the present moment, choice in the present moment, freedom of the present moment, and pay attention to your power of influence. Go where you are celebrated, not where you were ignored, and watch how much more of a genius you feel. All right? So we've got lots more classes till the end of the year, but today is about practicing your tens. Tens freedoms, tens abundances, like, and sit in it and not just observe it. Go demonstrate it. Go pick it up. Go see it. Go do some mirror work. This is not going to get easier. This game is designed to go back into primal roots of the master and slave program. The more sophisticated way for you to become a slave, the more sophisticated way for the masters to have control over you is what's coming if you don't exit the game. Because ultimately you are right now in 5D and 3D, which means that you have choice. You've walked through the fire, use your choice, not what you see in circumstances, but what the choice of your heart is in this moment to experience joy, to experience being a sovereign being. Leave where you are not celebrated. No one is going to see you in the subway. All right? Love you guys. I will see you soon. Oh, by the way, anybody that wants to join me for next year's class, okay, that wants to attend um, the non-duality classes that we're going to be doing, basically, it's like what we did this year. It's a whole year of classes. I'm going to grandfather you in at 50% of what you paid last year. If you guys let me know by the first week of December. Otherwise, if you want to attend, it'll be the $1,500 that you paid last year and you can join any time. All right. Otherwise, it's just a platform for me to be able to teach this as I'm learning how to live it and to keep us connected. All right. So let me know the first week of December. Okay. It would be the 50% mark of what you paid last year but you've got to let me know personally by that first week of December, okay? And that's a, like an early bird thing. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.